if you could just uh, introduce and just look at me and talk to me. Um, if you could just introduce yourself, uh, tell us your name, who you are, your position from. at the EMS. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my name is Jenna Massey. I'm the Vice President Academic and University Affairs at the AMS, which is the alma mater society, the student society at UBC Vancouver. Um, and why does, so one of our questions we've been asking people is, why does open matter for students, uh, faculty, and institutions? Um, so open matters, um, I can speak firstly specifically to students. Um, obviously the most apparent um, reason that open matters to students is accessibility and affordability, but beyond that, um, Students don't always realize the pedagogical benefits that open allows um, and that comes along with an adoption of not only open educational resources but everything that comes along with it. Um, and students who have been in classes um, that have used an open pedagogy have I would argue have, have found that it, it definitely impacts their educational experience. Um, beyond that, for faculty and for institutions, open is, um, is really the only way forward. If we look at 20, 30 years from now, um, most faculty members and most students will think that open is the norm, and we'll see that um, not only using open educational resources, but really thinking about assessments and outcomes in terms of open will, um, will be the norm. And so it's important for faculty and institutions to get on board now um, so that they are part of this movement and a part of creating it rather than catching up later on. Okay, great. Um, and do you think that open should be a default at universities? Why and why not? I think that, yeah, uh, I think that open in the future should be a default. Um, I think right now um, it would be problematic to be a default just because of, of where we're at and what understanding there is of open. And there isn't even really an awareness and understanding completely amongst faculty members, students, staff um, of what open is. And so, I would say it should be the default in five, ten years' time, but for now we should be easing in and tr kind of transitioning in and testing out what works for us because also at, at every institution something different is going to work um, and that's the amazing thing about open is that um, every faculty member who's adopt who adopts it, every student who engages in open um, should be doing so in a way that, that fits their needs. Um, and so I don't know about the default now, but I think in a few years, it should be the default. Okay, and so maybe uh, to get there <laughs> or whatever, um, how can we engage um, faculty, people, students? Uh, I think engagement starts with awareness. Um, so a lot of the work that we've been doing at the AMS and working with UBC has been just to raise awareness amongst students and also amongst faculty, not only of the existence of open, um, but of um, the need for it. So in terms of educational resources, very specifically, um, letting faculty members know what real uses of educational resources look like, especially um, especially non-open educational resources um, and impacts that that has on students and on the community. Um, I think that the way to engage is first to ensure that there is a true awareness of what's going on. Um, and especially at large institutions like UBC where there's um, 50,000 students and um, many, many faculty that we need to be thinking about awareness first because with that awareness and with an understanding um, I think engagement will be very easy and many um, faculty members who have become involved uh, in open have become involved because they've become aware they become aware of the implications that open brings with it. Okay. Maybe last question um, since you've been at this conference anything you know anything like what's one interesting thing you've learned heard that sort of thing, if there has been? Um, I think one theme, which is really great to hear, um, is that at a conference of P 
people, of converts, <laughs> and we're talking about those people who aren't yet aware and how we can make sure that we cater to their needs. Um, so for example, the, the users of um, open educational resources and open pedagogy, um, or the future users, ensuring that they're eased into this conversation of open and into the use of resources and pedagogy that, that really does adopt open um, is easy because uh, for those people who are very passionate about open, it's very easy to set aside time and, and thought into um, developing resources and assessments and outcomes for um, learning that are in the open, but for those who aren't necessarily already in the conversation and who aren't converts yet, um, making sure that, that they can engage with um, this conversation in their own way. Um, because often when we come together, uh, we're preaching to the choir and we all have the same things to say and all agree with each other and don't necessarily look outwards to what else there is. Um, just look to the obstacles that we've overcome to, to get to where we are. And so that I've really appreciated and, and has kind of stemmed a lot of thought for um, myself in how we can be easing people into um, the conversation surrounding open and then adopting open practices going forward.